AM 1350 WRWH, you're listening to the Candidates Forum, happening live at Roy Ash Community Room behind the United Community Bank. It's five minutes in front of seven o'clock. Trent, what's the temperature over there? Buster, we're sitting at a balmy 67 degrees here at the studios. That's good to hear. It's a very impressive crowd that we've got here at the community room at the moment. And, uh... I'm very, uh, Trent, i got to be honest, I'm looking forward to the two sheriff's candidates going back and forth. That should be pretty good. It's, I've been enjoying it so far, uh, sitting and listening. Uh, I, do, I do have people calling, though. They're trying to get connected to the website, so um, but they can't get the, the live listen thing to go in. So let me grab a hold of them real quick. I'll be right back with you. All right. And uh, the website that Trent's speaking about, wrwh.com, you can go there. You can click listen live. And it looks like the action's about to come back into effect. Everybody was taking a break. I'm going to turn it back over to Billy Chisholm. You're listening to WRWH, your hometown station. If, if everyone could take their uh, seats, thank you. And, and hey, I want, to, I want to just tell everybody tonight, because the, the radio audience can't see this, but uh, could, could the back row kind of come to Jesus back there? Okay. That's a... Uh, well, Thank you. Uh, I just want to say that, uh, tell the radio audience that this has been a very uh, cordial, uh, polite group of people. And let me tell you, anytime you get a group of people that, you know, have different candidates for office and all this, sometimes it can, uh, you know, it, it can get out of hand. But I, I just want to tell you, I appreciate how you've uh, handled yourself. And it's, it's a normal White County way of doing things. So thank you. All right. Uh, let's start with uh, these two men running for sheriff one is the incumbent one is the challenger and uh we're going to uh i don't think we decided how we're going to do this with y'all either so uh, who wants to go first okay uh th this is aaron altry and he's uh running for sheriff and after he makes his opening statement uh sheriff walden will will make his opening statement and then we'll go from there so mr altry I see a lot of familiar people in this room, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start like I don't know anybody. My name is Aaron Autry, I'm a lifelong resident here of White County, born and raised. Uh, been in law enforcement for 22 years. Started out in White County in 1994 as the first and the youngest 911 dispatcher ever hired. Um, went from that to working in the Hall County Detention Center. And then I came back to Cleveland, worked Cleveland for a, a short stint, then to Forsyth for a short stint, and then I came home. Uh, I was a deputy sheriff here for Sheriff Walden for 12 years. Um, during that 12 years, I had a two-year break that I was a canine handler for the North Georgia Canine Task Force. I worked for about seven to eight sheriffs, and that was a headache. But no offense, Sheriff, they're great people. They were great to work for. When I came back, um, I had Jaeger. Sheriff Walden purchased me Jaeger with some drug seized money, and we started making some licks on some drugs in White County. Um, I'm looking forward to an opportunity to have a drug dog or two drug dogs back in this community to try to hit that again. Um, the drug task force here at all over North Georgia, the regional task force, these guys are overwhelmed. I work in Habersham County now, currently, as a deputy sheriff. Been there since August. Uh, I retired from MARTA Police on July the 3rd. I worked there and had an opportunity to um, to leave MARTA because I, I was had a plan to run for sheriff. But when I, when I had an opportunity to retire early from downtown Atlanta, trust me, I, I wanted to come back home. Um, my experience down in Atlanta ranged from helping people push ABA to get their breeze machine to shootings and stabbings. It was a it was an amazing amazing adventure down there, but I'm glad I, I can stand up here and, and live to tell it. Like I said, I work for Habersham County right now. Currently, uh, we have a bunch of issues over there as we do over here in White County. The drug task force, they're working hard to do it, but they're just overwhelmed, and we're trying our best to help out what we can as a patrolman. Um, I also work part-time for Pendergrass. Yeah. 
city of Pendergrass. I think the time for the opening statement is come to a close. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, it's an honor always to stand before the people that uh, pay my salary every, every month. And I appreciate that. I've been serving the citizens of White County now for 37 years. Uh, that's continuous service to the t uh, people of this county. Uh, I've had the distinct honor to serve as, uh, as your sheriff for the past 25 years. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a big family. Uh, I've got about 14 grandkids, four children, uh, four, uh, three great-grands, and we'll have another great-grand uh, shortly, about August. But anyway, I have, like I say, I have served the citizens of White County for the past uh, 25 years as a sheriff. I brought law and we, my staff and I, have brought law enforcement into the 21st century in this county. My command staff consists of probably, back to a sergeant, probably 200 years of experience, uh, and that's hard to uh, that's hard to just go out and lay your hands on these folks. Know what's going on? They got. We got the pulse of the county. Yeah, we got our problems, but uh, we're we're right on top of them. We've got the drug task force, as uh, Mr. Altry said. They do a fantastic job. They took about six million dollars worth of uh, drugs off the street in the past four years and made 360 arrests. That's 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 chomping on the drug dealers' toes. But anyway, uh, we've accomplished uh, many things in the past. Uh, four years. Uh, a lot of it, uh, we put video cameras in the cars, laptops in the cars. Uh, you know, we've just done many things and our, and our goals, you know, we, we believe in, I heard Sean say it earlier, we believe in servant leadership. If you haven't served, it's just going to be hard for you to lead. And uh, we just feel that uh, we still got the, uh, the staff to uh, give you as citizens what you deserve. We feel we're giving you all what you deserve. Uh, we've got, as he said, the task force. Your, your time's about up too. Well, sure. I wouldn't be ready to quit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank y'all. I appreciate the opening statement. And now we're going to go with questions. We'll ask uh, each one a question. If y'all could just keep up with who goes first, and then y'all just flip flop back and forth. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, the first question I have is uh, if, if each of you, and we'll just kind of uh, start broad and, and get a little more specific as we go on. And by the way, we'll take this thing to about seven, at least 720 to give these uh, men the same ch uh, time that anybody else did. And, and I think uh, Mr. Dyer says we might could even stretch it to 730 or something. So, so don't go away. We'll, we'll be here. Um, uh, and if you have any more cards, I don't have a lot up here. So if you want to add, this is your opportunity to ask questions. Um, but I'd like to ask each of you, what does your typical day look like in law enforcement today? If you could each kind of tell which, which, you know, in, in two minutes or less. <laughs> I don't think I never get it done in two minutes, Billy, but, uh, I usually I'm out on the, uh, on the go by 7.30 or so in the morning. I'm usually in the office around 8 to 9 o'clock, uh, depending on whether court's going on or not. If court's going on, I'm usually in the courthouse. Uh, but anyway, uh, being in the office is a big part of, uh, of being, of operating, of running the sheriff's office. Uh, you know, a lot of things are happening. You know, you've got the, uh, the detention center there. You've have to, the, the staff, uh, they need guidance in a lot of ways to uh, know what what the day brings on, and uh, we we just the phone calls. You know, it's just it, the day is is real uh, hectic in a lot of ways because you've, you've got people that's calling from the night before of something that happened uh, that night, and you're trying to field all those calls. Then you got the people walking in, and you're trying to field all those calls. Plus, you got staff. That you got to give direction to and, and uh, make sure that, you know, things are going uh, in a fashion where they, they should go. Uh, then you always reviewing policy, uh, procedures. Uh, it's, it's just an ongoing thing. I would love to get out here in a patrol car and run and ride and 
stop cars and write tickets, but I can't do that. The job is too demanding there in the office for, for uh, to do that, but it would be nice just to get out in the car occasionally and, and uh, do some patrolling, which occasionally I do that. But my day is pretty full during the day with court uh, appointments from the citizens, uh, dealing with staff, uh, attending meetings. I sit on several different boards, and you know, I, if I'm going to be on the board, I'm going to be part of the community. And uh, so, you know, that about the time. Typical day for me is okay. busy. All right, thank you. And I'll ask you the same question. Let me just repeat it. Uh, what does your typical day look like in law enforcement today? Well, uh, I'm a patrol officer, so it could be anything from a, a simple call for service to do a VIN verification all the way up to the other night. I'm chasing a guy with a gun with a rifle strapped to me four miles with a tracking dog. So it just depends on the situation. I mean, it could be anything from a, a vast number of calls. That's what my day consists of right now. And currently I'm on night shift, so it's really a night shift thing. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, I would like for each of you to, um, this is a question from the, from the audience. Uh, please name uh, your main accomplishment or accomplishments as a law enforcement officer. Not the whole list, just to, you know, just to, you know, if you could name, you know, the top one or two things or something like that. And Aaron, I think you can go. That's a, that's a hard question to uh, answer really be honest i've i've got 2200 hours of training and everything from advanced weapons to school resource officer so i mean i've got a numerous bunch of accomplishments that i've accomplished my whole career that i'm very proud of um 22 years in public safety i've been reprimanded one time in my entire career and i think that's something to be proud of also okay. um working working with some fine outstanding ladies and gentlemen another another accomplishment that i think is needs to be reckoned it's it's a great a great feeling to know that you got some officers out there to have you back especially when the stuff happens okay thank you well billy my uh main accomplishment uh is my ability to sit down and talk with people try to reason work out and solve their problems because trust me uh be, uh, being the sheriff or being in law enforcement is not just cuff them and stuff them. You, you got to sit down with people and talk to them and try to help them with their problems. And believe me, they've they've got problems. It's just you would not believe what is dumped on your doorstep or or your desk or in your ear on the phone from the citizens, some of the citizens of the county. So I feel like my main accomplishment is being able to talk to people. Okay. I'm, I'm going to ask this follow-up question, and, it, and it's kind of, uh, I think, uh, Neil, you may have answered a little bit of it, but, but let me let you go first, and then we'll let Aaron go after this. And it's, um, what personal quality do you have that, you, that makes you most qualified to be the sheriff of White County? What personal quality? And, uh, and if, well, my, the person, my personal quality is, like I said, my ability to communicate with people and then my experience in this county. I've, I mean, I've, I've, I've been called old man and I'm getting on up in age. <laughs> but I feel like that wisdom and, and uh, knowledge that I've gained over the past 37 years in this county has all been about White County. I've been right here with the citizens for 37 years. And so I, I feel like that above all makes me more qualified for this job uh than uh other people okay thank you okay yes, sir. Aaron? Can you uh, the, the, question? the question is what personal quality do you have that that would make you most qualified to be the sheriff personal quality i would say a personal quality that i have is my my ability to to not only talk to folks but the ability to to do do the law enforcement job I mean, it's not not saying that Sheriff Walden is by no means not doing that. It's just it's one of them things that being a law enforcement officer, you have to be kind of a chameleon. You have to you have to be able to to go forward and reconcile with people about a problem that they're having, and then you have to be able to come up and 
slams them out of the ground if you have to. I mean, it's just one of them things that you, you have to, you have to be able to work in a, in a big realm. It's not just one particular thing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next question. Um, as Georgia examines criminal justice reform, what areas do you see in White County that might need reform? I, I think in the reform, I see some things that I think that we can work on a, as a sheriff's office um, to try to help rehabilitate folks. I think that we need a work release program, and that work release program, if you if you sentence a man or a woman to a, a child support and you suspend his license, how's he going to be able to do that? How's he going to be able to work, pay for his the kids that he's already got or the kid that he's paying child support on or his family. So if we, if we take a work release program, which will pay for itself and I have a way to do that, this work release program will help, uh, the person that's being sentenced to it. Maybe will help reform them, but it'll also help benefit their family, not only their family, but the kids. So I, I think that would be an issue that we need to address. I think that would help more than anything. Okay, thank you. Sheriff? Sure. Repeat the question. Dude. Okay. As Georgia examines criminal justice reform, what areas do you see in White County that might need reform or that needs reform? Well, to start with, I wasn't totally in support of Georgia's uh, reconstruction there. Uh, I think they've let, let too many people out of jail with it. However, uh, the courts here in White County, we've got several different alternative courts in White County. We've got the mental health, uh, drug court, and then the, uh, all, the uh, family court, which is handling the uh, child support cases that he referred to. And, and that is keeping these folks with their driver's license, putting them in these courts, and the courts are requiring them to do X, Y, and Z and uh, collecting the monies for these parents that uh, these kids belong to and uh, saving their driver's license. You know, we could, we don't, we had probably 102 people in jail today. 90, 90% of them was pretrial. The other 10 there were sentenced inmates. Those 10 inmates were working in a work detail there around the jail at the animal control. So we're utilizing every inmate that is sentenced in the county jail. And if you'll go back and look at the, if you, how many of you believe in the Constitution of the United States? If you go read the 13th Amendment, it plainly says you cannot work a pretrial inmate. So yes, we've got a lot of inmates sitting over there, but those inmates have not been sentenced, so therefore they cannot be worked. I, I love you, I love y'all. They ain't going to jail for you. <laughs> and I'm not going to vi violate the law in doing that. So, uh, you know, I think we're, I think we're okay so far as where we're at in this county with uh, the way we're uh, handling the business. We, uh, I am looking at a program through the courts and I not talked a whole lot about it simply because I didn't want it to be part of a political issue here. But uh, I'm trying, I'm asking the court to uh, designate my office as a, a community service uh, agency, whereas we can take these community service workers that the courts are sentencing, that a lot of them are not completing it and winding back up in jail just because they didn't finish their community service and put these folks out here on the road picking up trash and doing this kind of thing. So there's okay. a lot of things in, in play. Okay. okay, your time just ended just right. Okay. Uh, here, I, I can't pronounce this word, so y'all help me with this. It's, it's, it's a hot topic right now. Deaths from, is it op opioid? What is the? Not opium, but. Opioid. opioid. Deaths from opioid overdose has been termed an epidemic. I, is this like oxy? Heroin. Opioid. Okay. Um, I guess y'all know what that is. It's it's some kind of oxycodone or something. I don't know. Heroin. Okay. Deaths from this overdose have been termed an epidemic. I don't mean to make light of it. Uh, Nar Narcon is an anecdote for overdose and can be is an antidote for and can be made available to be used by county deputies. 
what is your position concerning making this uh, nor nor is it Narcan or Narcon Narcan. Narcan available? What is my position? Yeah, my position. I'm not. Um, how should I say it? Uh, law enforcement as a whole right now, they've got so many tools in their tool belt, it's pitiful. We're giving them another tool to make a decision as to whether to use it out there or not. Uh, I don't recall maybe two cases we've had along those lines with heroin in this county. And our EMS, our ambulance service, uh, uh, all those buses they got up there carry this stuff on. It's been on it for years. They're normally the first ones uh, there in, in, in most cases, and uh, I'm not opposed to doing it. Uh, in fact, we've talked about it. Uh, we've uh, our public safety director, David Murphy, and at our, one of our public safety meetings, we discussed it in detail. We sort of put it on the back burner till we got it run by our county attorney to uh, find out whether or not what what the liabilities were. I don't want to stick that in somebody and them kill over dead, then you get sued as a taxpayer for it. So we, we, we are involved in it. We are aware of it. We have not said no to it. Uh, it's on the table for and, uh, for discussion amongst the law enforcement in okay. the county. All right. So, Mr. Hawtrey? Narcan. I carry it in my patrol car. It's in the, right beside my leg in the door. I haven't had to use it. Thank God I hadn't, but I have it in case I need to. I've had the training. The uh, training with Narcan, the doctor stood up there in front of me and told everybody in the class that you, if you have an overdose, you can administer Narcan, and it will not in any way affect them other than help them. It will not harm them. You cannot overdose on it. That's exactly what the doctor from Northeast Georgia told us that give us the opportunity to take the class. Uh, I'm pro for it because I feel that if we carry a weapon on our side, we're trained to take a life if we need to. I think we need to be able to save a life if we need to. That's my personal opinion. I think we need to have AEDs in our patrol cars because I got a lot of family in this room. And if, if one of my family members happen to have a heart attack, whether young or old, I think they ought to be able to use that. If I'm going to get sued for something like that, I'd rather be sued for something I did and something I didn't do, especially in trying to save a life. That's just how I see it. Okay. Um, we're, we're coming to a close. We've got a, maybe a couple more questions. Actually, this question really is, is, is only for the sheriff to, to answer because uh, he would be the only one to know this. Uh, and it's how has recidivism, which means a prisoner returning back to jail after he's already been there, how has that rate changed in your jail from the year 2000 to 2010? If you know that, I don't know. I mean, is it up? Is it down? Is it, I don't, you know, what's your thoughts? Well, that's that? going to be hard for me to just out cold answer a question. I could go back and run some numbers and probably tell you, yeah. but just to sit here and say uh, it's up, down, medium, or what, Billy, I can't do it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. How, I don't know. I don't know is an acceptable question. answer. I would t think. Okay, that's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. People that have gone in and 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 then returned back, and and of course it all depends on you know what length of time and how many times, and so that's a you know thought I'd just throw it out. Somebody ask it, um, and then this is uh, uh, this is going to be our last question, and then uh, we'll give. Uh, uh, Mr. Altry, a chance to go last. Was, I mean, go with his opening statement, and then we'll give Sheriff Walden the chance to end it. Uh, I think all these candidates are going to be here for a little while. They're candidates. They're not going to go away as long as you're here. So, if you want to ask them a specific question, I believe they'll be here. We all all be here. Yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, and we appreciate uh, we appreciate y'all all being here. But now the last question, and this is for both of you. Uh, do you believe medical marijuana is a danger to the citizens of White County? <laughs> I've been asked that. Medical marijuana. Um, I, I'm not a doctor by no means. I'm, I'm a police officer. I'm not a politician. I'm the kind of person that uh, you want to know about Georgia law, I could probably quote it to you. I don't know enough about the medical, mar medical marijuana issue but I do know this, if I had a son or daughter and they had a situation or they had an issue and 
it was to that point that I knew that the medical marijuana, which I'm, what I know of it, does not have a high quantity of THC, which is the drug that makes you high in the first place. The If it's medical marijuana that's going to help my child or your child, I'm all for doing what I got to do to help them, especially if they're in pain. Now, I don't mean you go out there and I think you are to smoke up and then drive in a car. I don't believe in that. But I think that if it's going to help a child, I'm all for it. If it's going to help somebody in some pain, and that's the only pain, that's the only way they can get some relief, I'm all for it. I mean, that's 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 how I can see things. I mean, I don't know enough about it, really, to, to tell you am I pro or am I con, but I can say what I said about I'm all for it if it's if it's going to benefit. Well, Billy, I'm, I'm certainly in favor of the medical side of the, of the marijuana. The 159 sheriffs across this state supported the, uh, the medical side of it. They did not support the cultivation side of it. I'm, I'm against building a grow shed out here and start growing marijuana in the county. I'm fine if they want to put it down at one of the universities and use it as a project there. But uh, so far as the medical side of it, I'm okay with that. The cultivation side of it, and that's the big stickler right now. They want to put up these big grow places all over the state of Georgia. And guess what? That's money in your pocket when you start doing that. And we're, we're totally against that idea. Uh, the legislator, legislatures uh, got our message loud and clear in, in, on that issue. Okay. All right. That'll end the questions. And now we'll, uh, we'll go to a, the two-minute closings. Um, and we'll start with Mr. Autry, and then we'll end with uh, Mr. Walden. Um, I didn't come into this sheriff race um, thinking that I was going to run against Sheriff Walden. Um, I was under impression that he was going to have a retirement. And uh, I commend him on what he's done on his um, – Years of service. I worked for the man for 12 years. Great guy to work for. Can't knock that. Since I came out three, three years ago and decided that I was going to run, I've, I've had a lot of hurdles in my personal life and in my life. I worked hard for what I've got. I worked hard for what I've done for 22 years. Actually, for 41 years. I've never quit. Never, not one time. Whether it was on a football field at White County High School or it was chasing somebody through the woods, I never quit. If I'm elected sheriff on the 24th, every one of you have my word in here, I won't quit. I'll stand up for each and every one of you. Not saying that he has it. But if it comes down to the point to where they want to try to take our firearms I'm right there with you. They ain't going to do it in my watch. If it comes to a point that they want to try and, and make our county look bad, I'm going to stand up for our county. I'm going to stand up for you all. Everybody out in radio land, everybody out here, I'm going to stand up for us because this is my home. I was born and raised here. That's how I see it. That's how I see our county. It's our community and we're all family. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, again, I, I've, been, I've been right here with you for the past 37 years. I have not chased the dollar. I've been right here in White County for the past 37 years. I was born right across the street over there in uh, Babyland General, named after that old doctor that delivered me. So I'm a, I'm a full-blooded native of White County, and I love all these folks that's moved into White County. Uh, you know, I'm here with you. I'm, I'm, I've been with you for the past 25 years as your sheriff. I can look around this room, and I see faces that they've come sit in my office, and I've had to counsel with, deal with. Uh, mentioned the drug dog earlier. There's a man sitting right here in this audience that bought that drug dog. It wasn't bought with money outside the county. It was bought with personal money. So anyway, I've been here. I've looked after your dollar. 
come in under budget every year. Uh, you know, we, we've got an excellent operation up there. People fly in from all over the United States and look at our facility up there and copy it. So I ask for your vote and your support May the 24th. Thank you. All right.